Hi there, I'm artist Rob Reap and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad that you've decided to join me. We're going to have a lot of fun throughout the rest of this series working on this big fellow that I've got behind me, uh, which I'm titling already The Valley Floor. Uh, this is a painting that coming, coming from us from Telluride, Colorado. I'm really excited. This is one of my favorite places on earth. Love to paint it. You guys that have been with me on my channel for a while know how much I love uh, the western slope of Colorado, particularly the Telluride area. Um, last episode, we left off. We've had the sky fully painted in. That's where you should be now. You want to let that tack up for a couple of days for this next step uh, as we're going to lay in the underpainting of the mountains and uh, the underpainting for the river. That's coming up next here on Rob Reap Art Studio. Stick with me. Okay, once again, just to give everybody a refresher of what we're painting, this is the scene. It's from a photo that I took of the Box Canyon of Telluride, Colorado, this beautiful mountain range in the background. And uh, we're going we're gonna, to, obviously, as we get deeper into this, as you've seen from the painting in, in the earlier portion of the video, uh, we're going to idealize this scene quite a bit, but we're still going to, you know, ring true, uh, stick to the, the true nature of the Box Canyon itself. Um, I do want to mention before we get too too much further into this, if at any point you would like to to speed this up, uh, you can use the gear icon uh, within the YouTube uh, page. Not not difficult to do. You can speed it up and and still get to watch all of this just at a little quicker quicker speed. Um, this video is going to be around 20 minutes long for this episode, and you do need uh, for those of you that are just now joining us for this particular video. Uh, if you want to go back, uh, there is in this playlist, there's a playlist of, of this entire painting that's going to be uploaded um, with, within a few, few weeks. Uh, if you want to go back, you can watch the entire portion of me painting the sky uh, in this painting, which is the sky is not going to look exactly like this sky. Again, we're over idealizing things, but you can go back and you can, you can uh, watch that video and, and catch up. Uh, I do recommend that you let the sky tack up quite a bit or oxidize or dry, whatever you want to call it. Um, let that dry before we paint these mountains in. And, and I'm simply saying that for the edge. I want to be able to get the edges a certain way. Uh, and uh, I think for some of you at home, that may be difficult to do if it's a little bit wet. Uh, you can do it while it's still wet, but I recommend letting it dry. So let's, let's go ahead and get into this piece and get into the rest of it. And once again, we are, uh, we are starting the top of this is already already well painted in with the sky so we're going to bump down here into the river area and i started off with a pretty saturated blue now when i get done with this i may go back and 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 paint over this river quite a bit which will not be a huge deal but you can see i'm just laying in and i'm using cross strokes here i'm not i'm not scrubbing in the way i was with the sky and uh, you'll notice a very big difference in how i'm painting this this river in uh, than, than the way I, in which I do the, the mountains. Uh, so the direction of the brush stroke is super important. I'm just using a regular bristle brush, uh, ultramarine blue, a little bit of Van Dyke brown, not much though. Of course, white, uh, titanium white. And because I've got this, this painting planned out so well, I already know where I don't have to have the river. And that's a big deal. So I'm going to leave the gaps open for the trees and uh, the land where I want that. Uh, you you know there are other artists who would tell you just go ahead and lay a, a huge amount of color in and then you can go back over and paint it but uh, to me that just wastes waste time and space so and I laid in a little bit of that that gray in the in the river area there just so you could see that's where I'm going to want some rocks later on I just want to darken that little area just to remind myself but that river is going to get a lot more refinement that's simply an underpainting okay so then we bump up and it's time to start work on on the mountain range. So I've mixed up a a fairly neutral blue. Uh, this this is not an overly heavy saturated color. Uh, in fact I think my camera uh, when I've gone back and, and watched this I actually think it's a little bit more saturated on camera than it is, even is in person. Cameras tend to do that with auto auto correction, auto color correction and auto focus sometimes can can cause colors to be a little bit different. Uh, on camera so just be aware of that my the key is just don't oversaturate it and what I mean by that if you're a beginner don't go into this thing trying to make it the brightest most beautiful blue in the world you know keep it keep it fairly um, fairly gray 
if that if that makes sense. And you can do that with the Van Dyke Brown. You can add a little bit of a warm tone to it and just just kind of knock that blue that cool tone down quite a bit. You you want you want to still keep it a cool color. As I work work these these initial strokes that are on the skyline uh, into the into the canvas, I want to make sure that I try to work up. I'm scrubbing across, but I'm also scrubbing slightly up as I go. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm creating a soft edge. Yes, it is a mountain. It does need to have a defined edge, and it will. But that defined edge will will look too too fake if you don't have a bit of softness near the top. Uh, so when I say softness, what I'm talking about is a slight blend, a very slight blend. Now we don't want to blend it like we did the clouds earlier. You're not going to need to take a badger blender or any kind of other blender brush and, and blend these into the sky. We don't want to do that. Uh, if we were maybe doing a stormy scene with clouds rolling in, that would be an option, but we're not going to do that here. Uh, I do want you to pay attention as you as you paint these mountains in. These again, we're doing the background mountains at the moment, so they're even a little less saturated than the ones that we'll do here in a little bit are. Uh, but but pay attention to the to the direction of your brush stroke, even in these mountains. Uh, for instance, the ones I'm painting on now, yes, I do want them to slope to the left and down. Uh, so the direction of your brush stroke is is pretty integral at this point. And you can you can tell by this point why we want to do that undertone, that initial tone that we do of the canvas. That's simply so that we, you know, if we do miss anything uh, near the near this top edge or anywhere else for that matter uh, on this underpainting stage, that you know, hey, we've still got a nice earthy toned paint layer underneath, and it's not going to be a big deal. I got into this, and I kind of realized that even my white was still a little bit wet uh, from the sky it was not tacked up as well as I wanted it to be now for me that's not a big deal but for you at home you you are probably going to want to wait till till that that sky is tacked up significantly and what I mean by that is you don't want it to be where you're going to pull out any other paint when you when you're brushing uh, uh, on back on top of that those uh, layers of the sky right at the edge Notice I skipped from that left side over to this right side, and I haven't painted the middle. This middle mountain is going to be my focal point, and it sort of sits in the front, uh, well, in, or in between, so I'm kind of holding off on that one just to make sure that it sets apart from the others. I'm going to have a little bit more detail in it. Uh, the way I've got the sky painted, we're, we're going to have the, the, the three little peaks in the center are going to be fairly well lit, and they're going to be snow capped and they're all going to be snow capped but this one on the far right that I'm painting on now is going to be in a bit of shadow uh, and a little bit of cloud cloud cover so we're not going to have a ton of later we're not going to have a ton of sunlight beaming down on that on that particular peak start working on this big big mountain in the center which is really going to be the focal point of the of the mountain range itself We're still in an area where these these mountains are are sloping sideways and they're jagged and eventually what's going to happen at near the bottom they're gonna they're gonna drift down into a almost a strat stratified rock that's the only way I know to say it I'm not a scientist but uh, if you if you've ever been to to tell your ride or if you look at pictures of it uh, the at the end of the box canyon there's there's um, almost red rocks in in some some ways it's and it's a sideways movement to the rock or not movement but a sideways direction uh, to the rock stratification and we've got to think about all of that as we paint wherever the rocks are are leaning towards or how the light's hitting them we've got to be thinking about that even even at this underpainting stage because you could you could scrub all this shape in really quick with a big brush and not worry about any of that what would happen you would go back later and you would try to lay in your your lighter tones and what's going to then occur is you're going to have all those weird shapes underneath that so we've got to be pretty pretty well thought out you don't have to be perfect but you need to be thought out and you need to have it planned all 
I just continue to work my way uh, slowly and and I say slowly it, it's more methodical I really want to to just make sure that I'm doing it the right way the first time so that I don't have to let this thing dry sand it down and then repaint it so that I mean it is possible you know if you mess something up you can always let it dry and sand it that I've done that but that is a pain and you want to be able to just nail this thing get it right um, you know you want to have a little bit of randomness again the the style that we're painting in on this is an is is impressionistic realism uh, or at least that's what I call it and we want to use these big strokes we want to be able to um, convey a lot of material to the viewer or the illusion of a lot of material and a lot of a lot of different shapes and, and uh, objects within the painting and that all starts right now as I move further down within the, the canvas I start to to change the brush stroke direction and uh, I have to I have to be cognizant of when I when I work back into the top like I am here that I continue to follow those same basic stroke directions that I that I did earlier on those mountain tops. But as I as I drift down and I apologize that I'm I'm covering up a little bit of the screen here. But as I drift down, you can see I start to to really pull these uh, a little bit more sideways as I'm trying to get that that uh, stratified look within the rocks. Um, now, even though those are a little bit red or rocks down near the base, or, or even some of them gray, uh, I'm going to keep the general color just because they're around the same distance as these mountain peaks, and that's very important. I want to keep the same same distance and color tone and and structure uh, that that I that I have to this point. And this is this is a, a bit of a time consuming process. The way I've edited this video, it appears as though it kind of happens <laughs> in about 20 minutes. Uh, this was this was a, a couple of hours of just again calmly, quickly, but yet methodically uh, getting these these strokes in. And of course, I had to mix up a lot of colors because my palette is is relatively small. Uh, I'm currently working in a home studio, so I've got a I've got a, a small a little uh, basically a little 14 inch uh, glass palette and that just doesn't hold a ton of color so you now I like having that glass palette and again I'm working I'm, I'm like a lot of you guys I work from a, a home studio that's it's not super large so I have to conserve space and having a massive palette or um, something like that's just not really feasible for me so I do have to mix up colors quite often uh, and, and maybe that's a good thing I don't waste quite as much as I probably would otherwise <laughs> Um, but I but I do have that that complication. So as I worked my way down, I'm slowly building up uh, just this underpainting. Everything here is just the underpainting. But I just want to I want to make sure that you guys understand. Don't just slather on the paint in a block shape in this in this area. Don't don't be too random about it. You need to have your plan outlined. Get this get this laid in the correct way. I kind of took a step back, looked at it, wanting to see how the how these colors read uh, together. Um, in fact, I can already tell that I think I've got my water a little too saturated. So later, later in this process, um, I, I may go back and, and work on this water a little bit more and try to try to change it up a bit, or I may leave that for the detail stage that I, that I do on my own time. As I move forward, uh, I've got I've got some some more peaks to the outside that I'm going to need to bring into this that kind of slope down into this canyon but they are closer to me now while they are they they do end up being pretty large mountains uh, the, those mountaintops are not um, seen within this this perspective uh, but they they still do have a rock base and and so I'm gonna maintain this blue but I do I do change the the tone slightly as I move forward There will be some trees as well. These are these are all fairly well covered in some some pines, and so I, I will need to kind of keep that in mind. But they are jagged. They do have some jagged cliff faces, and again, the brush strokes are just so important in how I'm how I'm laying this out and how I'm building it. Don't if if you're a beginner, 
uh, or, or if you've been painting for a little while, but you've kind of stuck on small canvases, don't let the size of this intimidate you. I actually find I, I tend to like a lot of my, my larger paintings more, uh, per se, just, just simply because I, I seem to take more time on them. I also seem, seem to feel as though I can get more detail within a large, a large painting. Uh, I used to be the kind of painter with a large, a really large painting that I'd get, uh, I'd get the biggest brush I could find and lay in all these colors at once. And uh, I was, I was very much painting in in a in a an a la prima style at that point in my my painting career. And I'm trying to change things up now, so I go with a smaller brush and uh, not a tiny brush, a smaller brush. Be careful about that. I've got a lot of students who. When I say a smaller brush, they want to reach for the liner, <laughs> and you, you don't want to do that. You want to stick around like an 8 or a 10. You can go up to a 16 even with something this size. I'm going to finish up the final final little spot here in, in, within the, mo the mountain range that needs to be covered. And again, if there's any spots that, that I've left anything blank, I, I still have that undertone. Uh, to save me. Now I'm going to do a lot of painting on top of this. These mountains are far from done. They look very flat at the moment. They they um, obviously look a bit off because I don't have any other colors within this painting yet. Uh, this this thing's got to grow some. It's not there yet. So if you're painting with me, be patient, stick with it, and and let it happen over the next few episodes. Uh, I don't know how much how many more episodes it's going to take us to finish this one up, but. Uh, we will, we will, we will get it there, and I promise you that. Um, if you've, if you've enjoying this, this, all of my painting content, but even this video as well, please be sure and hit that subscribe button, and also hit the bell icon. That just makes sure that you get notified any time that I upload new content. Uh, the channel's growing; it's growing quickly, and I'm just glad that you guys are along to share the journey, uh, this journey of uh, the wonderful world of oil painting with me. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff, and I'll have new content each week, working hard to get new stuff out for you. And But once again, I'm just glad that you've decided to join join me here, and uh, it's, it's a real pleasure. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Keep painting, and God bless.